FutureCon 2016. Acompanhe a cobertura completa no Canaltech. A Gencel é uma companhia israelense que está aqui no Brasil há pouco mais de um ano e trabalha no setor de células de combustível. Aqui na FutureCon eles trouxeram uma nova tecnologia de células de hidrogênio que também vai ser usada no setor de telecomunicações, mas vai ter um impacto na vida dos consumidores. Para falar um pouco mais sobre isso, a gente está aqui com o Rami Rachef, ele é CEO da Gencel. Rami, thank you for being here with us. Thank you for having me. So before the interview, we were discussing how the hydrogen technology in fuel cells can impact not only the telecom sector, which you're you're bringing here to the FutureCon, but also to the end user. Uh, can you give me a little insight on this technology first? It's, some, it's something I start off with space exploration, right? Yep. Uh, can you give me the history of that? Yes, actually, uh, this technology uh, started to take over on 1960 with Apollo 11 mission. When NASA looked for kind of technology that will ensure the mission to get to the moon, they have found an uh, innovation that have been innovated in 1939 in, uh, in UK, in, uh, in Oxford, UK. So have, they have adopted this technology and converted to the first fuel cells based on alkaline fuel cells that actually ensure the mission. So if you ask the astronaut of Apollo 11 what allowed them to get to the moon, they will tell you that one of the uniqueness of this mission was an energy solution that allowed them to, to maneuver get them to, hate, to heat them themselves and have a drinkable water. So this was the starting point. Uh, uh, after that, all NASA missions and all space missions as the USSR, the Soviet Union and submarines around the world have looked into fuel cells technology in order to ensure their mission because it's defined with unparalleled reliability. So, uh, but they, it started off as something used in space exploration and now it's beginning to get into things from our daily yes. uh, usage, right? Uh, one of the, the use cases is in telco industry. You announced here a partnership with two carriers, two Brazilian carriers, uh, Claro and Tim. Uh, can you talk a little bit more of, on that? How are you using your technology? Sure. So when we, when we have founded the company, we have decided to take this space technology that is uh, defined with high reliability, with emission free, and try to ground the double meaning And, and try to uh, present it to a specific markets that cannot tolerate outages. They cannot toler tolerate outages because it drives them uh, losses and damage and inconvenience to their customers. One of the vertical markets that we, that we went after, it was the telecom industry. So almost a year ago, exactly actually a year ago, we have presented to the key uh, mobile providers here in Brazil. This is uh, Vivo, uh, Team and Claro, our G5 series. And this is a 5 kVA a fuel cells uh, a product that is generating, generating the energy at the moment that it sends, that it's losing the grid. So from their point of view, it's a system that reacts like a UPS. It's stable like a battery and can give you energy like a diesel generator for a minute, an hour, a day, a week, a year without any emission. So we have presented to that to, that, to that, uh, three companies and we have started a validation process that, um, that lasts for 9 to 11 months. And I'm very happy to share with you that this validation process ended flawless, with, very successfully, flawless, without any uh, technical issues. And uh, we are now, after this announcement that you just said with Claro and team, we are moving forward to our next stage of relationship with these carriers. Yeah, how, are, how is the implementation going to be? Uh, how many units? Uh, do you have an idea on the area that's going to be covered? So, uh, at the validation process, each carrier have uh, took one unit that have been tested in extreme, uh, extreme conditions. Different types of blackouts, different type of, uh, of duration of blackouts, and then different type of envi environmental, extreme environmental uh, 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 terms, such as At least we have one location with 95% of humidity. This is unheard of. But this system has kicked in, for example, over 88 times in the last year with a total duration of over 100 hours. And the, the operator, he didn't notice that this BTS, this best, uh, best transmission cell system, actually was in outages for 88 times because it was up and running with our fuel cell. You talked about the, how the The pilot was right. Yes. Uh, but the implementation is it happening starting now? 
uh, how is it going to be? I mean, the market implementation. Yes. So one of the reasons I'm, I'm here in the future con with my uh, team is uh, working together with all the carriers in order to move from the validation phase to the commercial commercialization phase, that including implementation. Hopefully it will start with their uh, key sites and then it will, can expand to other sites uh, around Brazil. Now, uh, the hydrogen cells that they have been talking about for some time, as you were just discussed in the beginning of the interview, but we still hear more about uh, traditional lithium batteries, let's say. You know? uh, why does the, doesn't this technology have found its place to the consumer yet, like consumer devices? Is it something that's going to power, let's say, smartphones in the future? Okay, the key, the key difference between uh, uh, battery, any kind of battery and fuel cell, is that a battery, when you charge, you have fixed amount of store of energy. That's all, this is what you have. And the moment that you start to consume energy, you'll have a discharge, you start discharging your battery. With a fuel cell, it's a different type of technology. As much as you can offer a fuel, it will run. You can have a fuel cell that can run for days or for weeks or for a year. With a battery, in the moment that you lost the, the, the energy, then you need to have charging time. So fuel cells, uh, you can find fuel cells today in uh, vertical of, uh, sectors, including consumers. You can have small fuel cells with charging cell phones. You have fuel cells who actually run uh, motorbikes, you have larger fuel cells who run cars, you have uh, uh, Japanese companies and American companies who launch already a fuel cells cars to the market, and you have also large fuel cells who who's act like a primary source as an alternative for the utilities. Now, batteries we, we can recharge, and as we're saying, and fuel cells might be used to recharge batteries. Correct. But is it possible to envision in the future uh, a place where we can have batteries working uh, uh, with hydrogen, let's say? Yeah, I think that you have touched a very, very interesting point. Uh, batteries and fuel cells, they are not a direct competitors. This is a complementary technology. Uh, I can share with you that we have uh, some installation in the US that we are, the f our fuel cells are charging the set of batteries that our customer uh, still have, have. So we are not replacing totally the, the batteries in some cases, but what we can do, we can extend uh, the, uh, the life operation of this uh, set of batteries. So just imagine that you have an, uh, like a an UPS at your home, but you will have some kind of charger that can charge this UPS. So it will not stay for 20 minutes as it's designed to be. It can run 200 minutes or 2,000 minutes. It really depends on the amount of fuel that this, uh, fuel, this fuel cells, in this case charger, will have. Mm, so it could be an assistance to the battery? Absolutely. To extend its, its life, uh, lifetime? Absolutely. Okay. I'm here with Ram Hachef, he is the CEO of Gencel. Ami, thanks for being here with us. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure.